What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Hammers Fans United and welcome back to the Premier League Roundup show. It's been a while since I've done this. Um, all I'm going to do is just go over the 10 results from round 14, I believe. Let me check that. Yes, it was round 14. And um, yeah, just, you know, state of play in the Premier League after 13 games. Some teams have played 12. Um, the first game was Leicester City at home to Manchester City. And obviously Leicester City have picked up some form. They were doing well. Manchester City was without the beast, the Norwegian Yeti, which is uh, Haaland. Um, and it took a moment of brilliance from Kevin De Bruyne to ultimately win the game. Great free kick, right in the top corner. Keeper had no chance. And um, yeah, City have got that quality and they will find a way to win. Credit to Leicester. Um, Tillemans had a, a fantastic effort from a corner. Volley the edge of the, outside the box. Saved fantastically by Edison onto the crossbar. Um, so yeah, it was um, it was a good game to watch. I actually done a watch along for that. It was a good game to watch. Obviously, you always want more goals, but you know when it's a low scoring game, you at least want a, a, an exciting game, and it was that. So um, well done, Man City. And yeah. They went temporarily to the top of the table because obviously Arsenal didn't play till the following day, which obviously we'll get to. Some of these games I didn't see. I haven't even watched the highlights. Um, so yeah, it won't be as descriptive maybe as that one there. Anyway, moving on. The next game was... I'm going to look at my phone. Oh, Newcastle United 4, Aston Villa 0. Which, once again, is crazy. You know, Aston Villa, they won the first game without Gerrard, without a manager. They won 4-0. And then they've just lost 4-0 to Newcastle. Now, I think Eddie Howe deserves a lot of praise for what he's done. Um, you know, St. Maximum's been injured for most of his time there. And then they brought Isaac to provide cover or an alternative to Callum Wilson. He also found his form early doors and then got injured. Um, so, yeah, Eddie Howe hasn't... You know, Newcastle got money, but they haven't really been chucking it around like that. So... And they're looking like serious top four contenders. They've got no European football to contend with. So yeah, it's it will be interesting, really interesting to see where they finish the um, season. And maybe the World Cup might come at a bad time for them because obviously it will disrupt the momentum that, they, that they've obviously picked up. But yeah, 4-0 against Aston Villa. It is Aston Villa. Um, yeah, it's... Yeah, you know, because... Aside from Arsenal and City, I think nobody else is looking convincing enough to say, yeah, we've got the top four on lock. So Newcastle's name is well and truly in the hat. Two goals from Callum Wilson, who I think, if it should be on that plane to the World Cup. Um, I think Almiron scored again, another great goal. And the, f the other one might have been their own goal. Listen, you lot, I'm not doing all this stats and, and you know, definite. I'm just telling you. Um, I'm just speaking about the result and, and the two teams Aston Villa obviously the next game Unai Emery should be in the dugout should be in charge and I do think that he will turn their fortunes around but yeah they lost 4-0 next game look at my phone on this list is Crystal Palace 1 Southampton 0 right sorry Crystal Palace 1 Southampton 0 um, I believe it was Ed, um, Edward who got the winner 1-0 um, Palace needed a win at the end of the show, I'll look at the thing and I'll see where everyone is in the table. But I know that they was flirting with relegation or the relegation places. Um, and aside from the top six, top eight, I think that all of the teams from ninth onwards are, you know, still very much in that mix around the relegation zone. Um, good win for Palace. Clean sheet. They are, I would say, better at home. And check we're still recording. There we are. Uh, so, yeah, you know, um, I like what Patrick Vieira is doing. And, yeah, I think they'll be all right this season. Next game is, was, one sec. Brighton, four. Chelsea, one. Who could have seen that coming? I don't know the Brighton manager's name. I could Google it now. No, listen, new manager. Hadn't won a game 
his first game, obviously, they drew 3-3 at Anfield. Leandro Trossard hat-trick. Um, who's in fine form, actually. He he scored again. I think he might have opened the score, but he scored again. Anyway, whatever. Um, so, yeah, this was their new manager's first um, victory. And what a victory. You know, 4-1 against Chelsea, against their former manager, against their former player in Cucurella. And it could have been more. Thiago Silva, I saw him clear two chances literally off the line. Um, crazy, crazy. And, you know, of all the teams to do it against, you do it against, you know, your departing managers, the team he took over, you, you, you went, or they came to you and that's the team that you decided, listen, this is where we're going to get our first win. Credit once again. Um, Chelsea are not convincing. And I did say at the time, it's going to take um, Graham Potter, you know, a while to implement, fully implement his style. He's done well thus far, but that is a it's a it's a big defeat, man, against the team that you left. Um, credit to Brighton, man. You know they are a good team, and Graham Potter has laid the foundations there. The infrastructure at the club is, you know, you would see them stabilizing the Premier League and continuing to do what they have been doing. So, once again, credit to Brighton, man, and Chelsea. Um, you know, they're not going to win the league and they just get thrown into that mix of can we make the top four? And now it's not a certain certainty. So, interesting season. Uh, next game. I can see it here, but I ain't got my glasses on and it's going across, so I'm going to look at my phone. The next game on this list was Brentford 1, Wolves 1. Um, Brentford took the lead, I believe. Yeah, they did. Credit to Wolves, you know. Then That was only their sixth goal. This is all off memory, you lot. I think they've only scored six goals now. They came back. And then that man, Diego Costa, doing what he does. We was waiting to see how long it was going to be before he got sent off. And he got sent off for, you know, a head movement towards um, a Brentford player's face. So, I think Brentford... No, Wolves would be more happy with that result considering they was away from home. And considering that they went 1-0 down. Um, both teams were coming off the back of a 4-0 defeat. So, I think going into the game, it was definitely a must-not lose for both managers. And like I said, I think Brentford, Thomas Frank will probably be the slightly more disappointed that the game finished 1-0. They are, obviously, both teams, both of those teams are in and around that, that mix, flirting with the relegation places. Next game was... Ooh, Bournemouth 2, Spurs 3. Now, like I said, me, I'm always credit where credit's due. Bournemouth went 2-0 up. And it was Kiefer Moore who got both the goals. At Bournemouth, obviously. And then, then Spurs pulled it back. You have to give credit where credit's due. They pulled it back to win 3-2. And surprisingly, Son went on the score sheet. And neither was Harry Kane. So, Antonio Conte has found a way to win. Um, they lost the last two, I believe, before that game as well. Um... So, yeah, they needed that and they showed great character away. Remember, Bournemouth's got like just under 12,000 fans. It's quite small, intimate. And, and to go 2 0 down there, um, you've got to earn that, that victory. And they've done it. So, you know, Spurs is another team, just like Newcastle, just like Chelsea, that are fighting for that top four um, spot, I believe. So, yeah, well done. Next game was 0 0. Fulham 0, Everton 0. Um, was that on? Did I watch that game? I don't even remember. I've seen I've seen it though. It was a decent game actually. Pickford done well in that game. Obviously England's number one. And yeah, it wasn't a boring nil nil. Um, Dominic Calvert Lewin is is back, and he will fancy his chance of going to the World Cup now that he's back and injury free. Um, yeah, not really much to say about that. But you know, Fulham is having a great season. Uh, Everton is doing well as well. Um, they've got good players there. So, yeah. Fulham, you know, now you, I would say with, with with certainty that, you know, Fulham are going to stay up this season, having been promoted. And Everton are looking like they're, you know, they're going to step as well. But, you know, both of those teams are still below, you would think, the ones that are fighting for Europe and they have to be thrown into that mix. But Fulham is, is looking, looking good. And they'll probably be disappointed that they couldn't win that game because they're at home and Everton away from home is not the best. Next game, surprising result, was Liverpool 1, Leeds United 2. 
Now, obviously, I've got a, a strong um, alliance with Leeds United. And I did actually predict a 2-1, two leads. Now, could you have seen it coming because of Liverpool's home form? Probably not. You know, West Ham went there, should have got at least a point. Brighton, uh, free all. So they find a way, basically, to, to, to win at Anfield or not lose. And I watched that game. Obviously, Leeds done really well. They earned their victory. Sloppy first goal conceded by Liverpool when Joe Gomez kicked it back blindly, didn't even look up and put it on a plate for Rodrigo. Um, then Salah gets Liverpool back into it. And then you'd think after that, it's, you know, Liverpool's going to go on and win this game. And right at the death... What's wrong with you? What's the matter? Right at the death... Um, uh, what's his name? Somerville gets the winner for Leeds and it was set up fantastically by um, Willy Nonto who is a, a new young Italian signing that hasn't really featured too much in the Premier League so credit to Jesse Marsh for his selection the players he left on the pitch and the players that he brought on the pitch and a great much needed victory for Leeds United you right? I'm doing a video you want to sit there? yeah you have to keep your hands down now right so the next game don't touch that mic. Next game was Arsenal 5, Nottingham Forest 0. Where was I? Um, Arsenal 5, Nottingham Forest 0. Um, this came after Arsenal's draw away to Southampton in the last game where they was 1-0 up. And it came after Nottingham Forest beat Liverpool at the city ground 1-0. Um, and Arsenal showed, you know... That title-winning performance in regards to how they bounce back from disappointment. 5-0, uh, convincing victory. And, you know, Saka went off. His replacement was um, Reese Nelson, who came on and scored two goals. Um, Mikel Arteta is another one. You've got to give massive credit to him. You know, he had his doubters. The fans wanted him out. And, you know, sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes certain managers, they need the time. You know, it's not a quick fix. You can't just come in and implement your philosophy. Um, and clearly now he's doing that. And I would say, thankfully, for the for the sake of the Premier League and to make it competitive, Arsenal are actually providing Manchester City with genuine um, competition. So um, it's refreshing to see because, you know, Liverpool, I knew Liverpool would fall off the pace this season. And I did put, state that way before the season even started. Um, did I think Arsenal would be the the main title challengers no but it's a good thing that they are up there challenging and they haven't played each other yet their game got cancelled so you know it's the student video master when they do finally um play each other and i know i say the word interesting a lot but that game will be very very interesting seeing as the relationship that pep and Mikel Arteta have so yeah credit to them and um yeah i think forest if they are going to stay up then it would be their home form that sort of um, helps them stay in the Premier League not their away form um, but yeah Arsenal 5 not in Forest nil. now the final game was obviously Manchester United 1 West Ham United 0 um, I may speak on this a little bit longer than the others but I might not for me as a West Ham fan you know, seeing down Suchik and Rice starting is not a good look for me. It's too defensive, it's too pragmatic, and it's it's the same old, same old with David Moyes when he goes into these games against the so-called big six teams. Um, you know, when you looked at the, the starting line at Manchester United, it didn't strike fear into me. They had no Anthony, no Sancho, no Martial. Um, yeah, so, you know, Elanga, Rashford and... Um, Ronaldo would start in front three. They had Ericsson, Casemiro and Bruno as you'd say the, the middle three. Now, I did say that between Rice, Suchek and Downs, those three are more powerful runners. They're faster than Man United's. So if we could, you know, take the ball off them, we could drive forward and um, leave them in your wake basically because, you know, they won't keep up. And that was proven when I think Rice got away from um, Bruno Fernandes quite easily um, in the second half. Um, so yeah, you know, Marcus Rashford is looking good. 
He scored a good goal. I feel that Kera probably didn't realise he was there and didn't even jump. Um, and it's unfortunate that that was the, the winning goal because Kera had a good game. And I think, you know, if he would have jumped and maybe prevented that goal, then West Ham could have went on to win the game. Now, the frustrating thing for me is that it took until the last probably 15 minutes for West Ham to start being attacking, being a threat and putting Man United under heaps of pressure. Now, I did say during my watch along that David De Gea made, let's say, three quality saves in those final 15 minutes. Now, by the law of averages, if we would have played that game for the whole 90 minutes, that means he would have had to have made 12 saves just like that. Uh, and you know that some of them is going in. So it's just for me, I did title the watch along at the end, you know, another missed opportunity because I feel that, you know, as Liverpool were, Man United were actually there for the taking. We showed them too much respect with the lineup and, and the way we played. We gave the ball away a lot. Declan Rice gave it away um, a couple of times needlessly, um, which could have led to a goal. Um, Craig Dawson done it, you know, edge of our box. Um, and then when we finally decided and realised, actually, Man United ain't nothing special, not with this team that they've got out there. We were the dominant team and, you know, they was holding on. So it is a missed opportunity and it's frustrating that we approach these games in a manner that we do. Now, what I'm going to do is, you know, once again, credit to Man United. You know, you you, you rode out the storm that we provided in the 50, last 15 minutes. You kept the clean sheet and, you know, David De Gea, that's why you need that top quality goalkeeper because he didn't really have much to do the whole game apart from in those final 15 minutes and he had a lot to do and he stood up to the challenge. Um, West Ham is still peril perilously close to the bottom three, as are a lot of teams. And we are at home to Palace in our next game. That You know, no easy game, but we need to get three points out of that. Anyway, let me just go through the table before I wrap this up. Arsenal went back to the top. Um, I'll put this on the screen, actually, so I won't go through every team. So it's obviously Arsenal Man City. They've played a game less than Spurs and Newcastle, who are underneath them. So, But Spurs are still only three points behind City, having played a game more. Um, Chelsea are now in sixth position. I'm only learning this now as I look at it, actually. Fulham, only two points behind them. Brighton in eighth. Liverpool are way down in ninth position. They do have a game in hand on some of the teams above them, but they are currently 15 points below Arsenal having played the same points. Um, who else have we got? Palace, Brentford, everybody. Boom, 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 boom. Leeds uh, out of the relegation zone on 12 points. And then Leicester are back in. So the bottom three is three Midlands clubs. Forest at the bottom, Wolves, and then Leicester. But it's tight down there. Really, really tight. Liverpool are closer to the relegation zone than they are to fifth so yeah not a good look for Liverpool anyway I will put this on the screen because I know I don't like looking down at my phone and, and not looking on the screen but you know I'll put the table on the screen as I'm talking I don't know how long have we been recording for I don't even know um I didn't want it too long will I do these things every week I'm not too sure probably not maybe um but yeah I thought you know it's, it's good to recap as to what's going on in the Premier League and yeah that's it man um I'm gonna be back Probably tomorrow. I'm going to I'll hopefully record later on tonight with Abel and he will do his player ratings. And then, if so, that will be posted tomorrow because we're going to have to record fairly late this evening. Anyway, thanks as always for the support of the channel and all of that. Um, big things to come from the channel. And yeah, I will see you or we will see you in the next one. Ciao.